Hi everyone, I'm making a 2D narrative platformer based around staying in the shadows and running from the light with my team, Black Eye Studios. And this is the first devlog of many. Today, which means trust and loyalty in Latin, it's a 2D narrative driven platformer targeted towards stoic gamers who don't really know their place in the world, find a little bit more faith in their own emotions through light and shadow mechanics. In the game, you play as Matilda, dwelling in the desolate realm with her free-spirited and adventurous friend Faith. One day, Faith goes missing, and Matilda traverses the land in search of her. The catch, however, is that it really hurts Matilda when she stands in the light, and she has to move through the shadows to find her. As the lead game designer of the project, I had to design the game and create a Unity prototype that showcased what the game was like before we could create it in a custom engine. In this video, I will talk about what I did in the past 4 weeks. I spent half of the first week thinking about who I was designing this game for. I came up with a persona for a start, then began working on the base for a game design document for the game. I focused on identifying the key design elements that make up the experience and then drafting it out. These included target audience, pillars, fantasy and theme, or engagement, mechanics, dynamics, and so on. I designed the whole document like a game magazine, and I plan to work on it throughout the course of the project. I decided that the core loop of the game is revolved around using expressive movement to traverse past timing-based light obstacles. This would be engaging on a moment-to-moment -moment scale, in order to better portray the narrative. I also wanted to keep the core game as simple as this, because from a UX perspective, it reduces cognitive load and thus allows players to better immerse themselves into the world and more importantly, into the narrative. And I got straight to developing the basic architecture of the game. This included a game manager, event manager, and a scene manager. I used this base to incorporate and develop the first iteration of player movement. I also set up the lighting using the 2D Universal Rendering Pipeline using 2D lights and shadow casters. In the second week, I created a demo level to test the player movement. I used a simple ray cast from the light source to detect the player character. How this works is that the ray cast would return false if it came into contact with any collider that blocked its path, and true if it didn't. This would be used as the basis for the win-lose condition. Because of the previous week's feedback, I created a separate movement gym scene where I could refine the movement freely to the best version of itself. I wanted to make a movement system so fluid and accessible that a kid spamming random inputs could progress through the game with no issues. I referenced the game's speedrunners and how they did their wall slide, wall run and wall jump mechanics and replicated it in the scene. To decrease the difficulty of the movement, added coyote time for both wall jumping and running off the platforms. I also added some particles and procedural animations to buff up the game feel and really hone the experience of grappling around with the character. I also tweaked movement inputs such that the jumps could vary in height due to how hard you press the spacebar and is affected by running momentum and collisions. All these made the movement feel a lot more fluid and comfortable for people who are just spamming keys as the inputs would flow into each other interchangeably, pushing the expressiveness of the controls. I aim to make the user feel as though they were really stepping into the shoes of the character, which is essential in allowing them to feel an immersion and connection to the narrative. In the fourth week of development, I incorporated some rules to the game prototype. Firstly, 
I created the title sequence and lock player input until it ended. This way, players would not be randomly running around before the game even started. I then added dialogue that popped up at various events. I also added tutorial pop-ups to make it easier for players to understand what was happening. Finally, I integrated my artist's illustrations into the scene to test how the assets gelled together. I followed her reference sketches tightly and tried to replicate her vision using post-processing and color correction. Some game dev magic and a lot of hard work later, the prototype was finished. The reception for the prototype seemed pretty good, and I'm excited to see where the idea goes. For the second milestone, I'm aiming to dive a little bit more into the world building and the narrative before porting the game over to our custom engine. I'm really looking forward to see what the project looks like in the near future, and I hope you are too. Thank you for watching, and see you guys next time.